story where I didn't get good grades. I couldn't play sports, but lo and behold, I could play that fucking guitar. Uh, <laughs> it didn't come super easy, but it was just sheer will and determination. And it was the eighties. Uh, and I'm the youngest of seven kids. So I was listening to, to Motley Crue and Metallica and Judas Priest and ACDC and Aerosmith. Yeah, my favorite band is Judas Priest. That's crazy that is you it? have this. I was, gonna, I was gonna wear my Iron Maiden just to tribute for Nikki, but um, and yeah. But so I started having a uh, uh, local bands, and yeah. I was in one of those local bands. All my local bands would always win the battle of the bands, and uh, a lot of that was because we were just determined. Um, we wanted to sound good, whether it was covers or originals. If we were playing Motley Crue, it needed to sound like Motley Crue. If we had an original, it had to have a chorus in it. You know, we were determined. Uh, so I did that all through middle school and high school. And yeah. after I got out of high school, I found out that I could actually, actually make money playing music in a cover band. There was a top 40 cover band out of my hometown that toured all around Texas even further. And you'd get a paycheck every week. And you would play everything from ACDC to country music, a lot of pop music. And man, it was like going to college. I'd have to play a Green Day song and then have to play a Terrence Trent Darby song or whatever it was that we were doing. Yeah. And it was challenging because at that point, I could only really play hard rock and metal, but it took me to another place. And I learned how to play flat five chords, augmented and all these other MI words, um, I learned how to play. So I had an original band during that time also. They were called the Union Underground. And once again, we would win Battle of the Bands and all this kind of stuff. Uh, we had our own recording studio. Uh, we yeah, actually that, got, uh, yeah, that was like the late I'm night. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I, and I, I'm sorry, I read about that. Like, can you delve into it a little bit? I mean, ha at that age, to have your own studio, the, the, the developed sound of the band at that point, it feels like everything is kind of packed together around that time. Was it really that tight or how'd you get that? It I mean, that's, was. Uh, we were determined. Ambitious. We were getting out of high school and people were, our friends were going to college and all this stuff. And I wasn't going to go to college. I, 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 passed, I graduated high school with only D's. I think I got an A in <laughs> art class or something, you know? Uh, so me and this guy, me and my buddy, uh, who was a singer, we put all our money into a recording studio. They had these things called ADATs back in the 90s that were the first digital thing. Man, it changed the game. We had 24 tracks. We had uh, all this outboard gear that we had to borrow money from, take out loans, all kinds of stuff from family members, from a bank. And we had our own studio and we would just record and write constantly when I wasn't playing with the cover band. That was the other, that yeah. was the two I'd bounce. Uh, the demos started sounding really good. They didn't sound like demos. They started to sound like stuff that we listened to. So we're like, oh man, maybe we're on to something. And once again, we would win Battle of the Bands and open for the Scorpions or stuff like this, you know. Really? Uh, we were hated in our hometown by the other bands because we probably, probably their girlfriends thought our band was great. I don't know. You know, those what usual- town, What town was this at? This was San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio, okay, okay, sure, yeah. Yep, and um, we would give out demos everywhere that we would print with like uh, stickers in them and lyrics. It, it was on cassette still. It was mid to late nineties, uh, and we got a we got a review in this magazine out of L.A. called Music Connection, and my buddy worked for Music Connection. He said, "Hey, man." I can, we, we're looking at you guys causing a buzz in South Texas. We're going to give you a review and music connection, but I'm warning you now, they shred and, and hate every band and they find everything wrong with your band and it's going to be printed in there. They're going to find <laughs> everything wrong with your band. And I was like, I'd already developed a tough skin. Uh, I was like, I'm just happy you guys are going to put us in music connection. And when uh, the... The issue was printed. My buddy called me up and said, I can't believe they actually didn't rip you apart. You got a good review and music connection for your demo. I said, wow. He said, enjoy it. It's rare. So we had a phone number in there where you could call on our little studio phone. People called us and wanted to know who we'd, we had showcased for and what, what labels were checking us out. You know, this is 1997, 98. 
And no labels had checked us out at that time, but uh, a few people got involved and started getting labels to come see our band. They'd come to San Antonio to see us play. Interscope Records, uh, Geffen Records. We got in a van and, and drove out to play for some other, there was like seven big labels. Yeah. Everybody always said that we were great and we had substance, but we didn't have that radio song that same thing you always hear. And we were kind of annoyed by that. So I remember we were on our sixth or last showcase, about six of them, and Sony Columbia was gonna come see us. And I was 100% convinced they would once again say, great band, where's the radio song? I was sure that was gonna happen. I was sure of it. We played our show in San Antonio, sold it out as we had done many times. We had Pyro at the time. This is before the great white debacle. Oh. And um, a guy came out with a beard that you've seen in the Aerosmith videos. His name's John Kolodner. Oh, he's been, yep. he's the judge yep. in I Can't Drive 55. Oh, yeah. He shows up to our gig. Ooh. And we all said, whoa, this is serious. serious. Yeah. This is serious. That guy is like the Rick Rubin of the operation. Mm -hmm. John Kolodner loved the band, flew back after talking to us. They called us in a couple of days and said, can you come out to LA? We have, we're ready to sign an album deal with your band, Union Underground. I said, oh my God, I was wrong. They didn't say we didn't have radio songs. And uh, we got a big attorney. We went back and forth. We did all the things that you do as a band. And we signed a major label deal with Sony Columbia. And we were in our 20s. Now, it that's a fantastic story. And, and I can tell you, you, it sounds, you say it sounds like an ordinary story. Most bands aren't coming out, recording their own stuff, having a hotline number. Yeah. Having them come out to their things is usually no bidding war. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Having a lawyer actually around when they sign it. Oh, dude, we were so... I we really had it a little more. Oh, yeah. Line. We were driven. We, we ran video with our click track live and had video screens like ministry would have. My buddies who had worked at a, a video editing facility in San Antonio, it was a real facility. They helped me put together a system. So when the drummer played on the click track, all the video footage that we put together went on the screens. So you saw our band, there was pyro and video. Yeah, you, are, you already right. established. So he came in and saw a band, it was already kind of put together. Yes, they called so us you a, turn all... key, a turnkey band, they called us. He said, <laughs> your band is a turnkey band. And I was like, well, okay, sounds good. And, um, it happened, man, and we uh, we came out to L.A., and half of, of our album, the album was called An Education in Rebellion. I have a plaque for it right up there for selling half a million copies. Uh, half the album was what we had recorded in the studio on mm -hmm. our own. The other half was stuff we did with big producers out in L.A. in a big famous studio, and then a famous uh, mixer mixed the whole album. Yeah. And um, the album at its peak sold about 5,000 copies a week when we were on OzFest. We were playing the second stage with Disturbed and Mudvayne and all that stuff. I remember before we got to that point, we took out an unknown band that had a rapper and a DJ and they would get booed every night playing before us. They were called Lincoln Park. <laughs> and they, they used the same producer as us. This was 1999, I think maybe 2000 and I remember Chester gave us the CD of hybrid theory before it came out and I said that is going to be mega huge and I was right it was easy to tell uh, it was Limp Biscuit meets the Backstreet Boys it was gonna be huge and sure enough it was there was other bands that opened for us like Nickelback for a minute and um, not to say that all these bands opened for us and they got bigger than us. That was only a few. I can name 500 bands that opened for us, didn't get anywhere. Yeah, we don't know, no, yeah. No, you know, and um, we did the OzFest and everything seemed like it was going well until it was time to record the second album. By that time, we had seen Six Figure Checks, which if you ever want to know what a person is like, hand them a Six Figure Check and just watch what they do with it. You'll learn a lot about a person if you hand them six figures. Doesn't even have to be a lot of money, just six figures. And that changed some people in the band. And we had a bunch of cliche problems from drugs and bad management. The second album never even completed. We got into a huge studio with big producers. 
I made friends with some of those producers and I ended up getting gigs like playing on a Rob Zombie album and stuff like that. I'm good at making friends and networking, but the band, it was, it was done. We couldn't even get songs finished. And I finally said, I'm done with this right about the same time the label was done with us. Now, not to say that we got dropped, there was 75 artists. This is after the Napster thing, 2002. Mm -hmm. The label got rid of 75 bands. Even Ozzy got off the label for a minute and down to Union Underground. And um, the band was over. This was 2002. And I said, well, I've made some friends in LA from big producers and stuff. I'm just going to go move to LA. So that's what I did. And um, I've just done a lot of studio work out here. Got to play with heroes like Janie Lane from Warren. And uh, I do a lot of uh, recording on other people's albums. And ultimately I got, uh, I started my own band, Heaven Below. And after that, I ended up playing also with Lita Ford. So now my two things I juggle are Lita Ford and Heaven Below. But Union Underground yeah. was my start into that whole world. I actually have a question about them. And it's, yeah, I remember at the time, at that time, a lot of music, a lot of bands had a certain, you know, you get your genre of sound. You had that had a certain sound of the, of the time. And I think your, your break apart, your sound is you actually can go to rock. You're, the band you're now sounds different. You have a good voice. It's not the 90s new metal. I hate, I hate these terms. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? It, it has a certain time period. Yeah, new metal. Your music doesn't, does not have it. I mean, Union Underground has a certain mixture. But it, you know, yeah. they all got lumped together. It, it's yeah, because it was coming out of the the end of industrial, and then you had like the leftover post grunge, and right. Union Underground came out at that time. It ended up being called new metal. I don't right. care what they call it, whatever. No, but, but the sound because, is different though. You you have a different sound. Like I'm sorry, on your own. Like, oh, thank you. you. Like that, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's. I went back. I had to go back and listen because the time there's so much music going on and on. I'm like, oh, I remember that. I had to go back. I'm like, all right, I hear it, and the production's good, and you kind of came out. It was like, you have like your own wall of music coming out. And uh, actually, step back. The video you guys did, uh, is it Revolution? Is it? Revolution Man was one of our singles. That video, you got to tell me. How'd you guys shoot that? Was it in a studio? Was the water? The effects were really, really great for a video. Warner, it was at the Warner Brothers lot. The yeah. label spent over $350,000 on that video, which was a lot at the time. They built a huge set that looked like the Alien movie. Um, it was badass. It was fun. It was really well. I got to be honest with you. I've a lot of videos back then. It's got to a certain point. You're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. But I was watching. I was like, that's a really good video, man. Like, it was really, cool. Like, the effects were good. Yeah, but I feel that we had already made a few mistakes. Uh, the first song was that Power Man 5000 sounding one, Turn Me On, Mr. Dead Man. Yep. That got everyone's attention. We got on tour and we had this song called South Texas Death Ride. And the audience would sing it at us. And we're like, holy shit, it's not a single. We have to release this. Well, yeah. people in the camp said, no, you can't release it. It's too heavy. We need something more radio. And somewhere along the way, it ended up being Revolution Man. And I felt that wasn't right because uh, Let the Bodies Hit the Floor had come out from our buddy's yeah. drowning pool. And, you know, one step closer to the edge from Lincoln Park, I'm like, South Texas Death Ride was supposed to fit, was going to fit right in there. So in my opinion, there was a, hu there was a huge mistake there. Yeah. Uh, and then the label spending 350 grand on a video, uh, you know, but I went with it. But that was part of the erosion process, in my opinion. Um, but it was a good song. I got I even be on a song, the video itself. I'm not going to talk about the song. I just, the production of the video was really good. <laughs> it was crazy. Water sets underwater and shit. Yeah, it was like water world, but good without sucking. Yeah, it was like, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was acting parts where we had to act and stuff. It was really good. I mean, I, I was kind of surprised for that level, like bringing you know, one album, and I was like, oh, it's a really good video. Well, then, um, what to make, to add, uh, to add more craziness, we ended up doing a song for the WWE, uh, a wrestling theme song across the nation and that had great success for us at active rock and that would have been the perfect uh bridge to the second album but pe certain people in the band weren't being efficient or rowing <laughs> i guess people were rowing on the same side of the boat it wasn't it was just going to the, it was going around instead of forward well i i see that they're they are they back together are they trying to get back they got back together recently the singer was able to acquire the name. Uh, that's its, its own funny story. But I haven't, I've heard about announcements of shows. I haven't heard music. 
they don't I don't know what the members are so I'm I'm estranged from the singer we all are the bass player as you know went on to play in Disturbed and currently yep. does uh I don't know where the drummer is yeah I just I just didn't look back I just came out yeah here. I, I came across I've only asked that because uh, not looking for anything I actually saw it when looking up more current stuff and kind of digging a little deeper and just kind of saying okay so you guys were here you were here to you know how were, were you you know where the family tree goes off Exactly. And when I saw that, and I saw, oh, it was this, and I think it mentioned maybe another guy who used to be in a band was in it, and then they got, I, I don't even know who the guys were, you know, and they're doing a show, yeah. and that was the only thing I saw was that, and I was like, oh, because I don't really follow that. I don't um, think they're active, and, and yeah. uh, you know, one of my I remember the date. one of my friends said, the problem with, with today's day and age, you're either uh, appearing or disappearing, yeah, <laughs> so pretty much. I'm trying to keep appearing. <laughs> Well, I, th I think the way you're doing it is the way, the way to go, you know? Thanks, man. And I think you got to be friendly. I, don't, I think you can't be a jerk in an industry. And, and you can name some of the best, most successful people out there. Whether it's You, you can see what it's, they what it's done for. Who's the guy from Trapped, the singer from Trapped? That hasn't helped him at all. I think they're going to vote him off the island. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't think it's going to. I mean, but if you look, if you look at the friendliest, nicest people, I mean, you look at um, like a... Uh, Producers Warren Hewitt, you know, uh, super nice guy. You know, it, 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 you know, the nice who you are. People want to work and with nice people nowadays. That's how I've nowadays. gotten gigs. Of course, you know, the right. playing of the instrument and the presentation is important. Uh, you know, but when I get to play on people's albums or I get to audition for Lita Ford, they're like, this is a guy we can get along with. It's important. I, and I think when I was reaching out to, you know, some people and um, like, you're like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, and that's the important thing. Like most people who are actually established artists, good into their music, really do it for music, are like, yeah. I had some people that were not even established. They also wanted to have people on that play music or whatever. And they're kind of like, oh, they're like, how many views do you have? Or how many do you have? I'm like, I'm like, are you kidding me? You guys are like buying ads on Instagram. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> they were. And I'm like, if somebody wants to talk to you and pay attention to you, you know, and, and, and you know, that's not the way to go. Just got to stay active, man. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know why some people are, are like that. They're guarded. I don't know what they're guarding, but I feel like if you got something to say, put it out there. Well, I think they look at more as a business than just you know than a lifestyle brand. I think you know. Yeah, if it was a business, I'd have quit a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's, it's you know you're, you who you are is who you are. You know, it's not just your job; it's who you are. It's not two separate things. So Absolutely, it carries over. I think you know. Um, so that, be, that being said, so like the sound that you had in the other band and, and, and to, um, your new band now, not really new, what, 10 years old? Yeah. You've pretty much been the lead. You had, that, you had some turnover a couple different people over the years. Yeah, I was always a guitar player that could sing in the studio. I wasn't like the live guitar player, except for like in cover bands. But by the time I got to Heaven Below, I thought, you know what? I think it's time for me to go ahead and, and decide the mood of the room. And yeah. uh, I, I took you mean, my vocals from studio to, to live. And you do you have really really good voice. I mean, you can stand you can stand alone, your acoustic, you know, Thanks. rock. I mean, it's the production. Like, who's recording your stuff? So is it you? Mostly me. Uh, I'm out here in LA, so we have all kinds of great facilities. But right, you right. know, a lot of stuff I can do right in here. I, I do most everything but the drums. The drums get their own special facility, and then I can do a lot of the stuff in here. And not only that. I got a lot of badass people helping me. You know, I go down three streets over or a street over and it's my buddy that's done all somebody else's big records or whatever. Yeah. So I'm good it's, at, it's, it's always been a good. networker. But your albums, and they all sound from the, very, from the first one, you know, because I do, I go back, I listen to everything side by side by side. Yeah. And there's not a, it's not like, oh, you can tell this was new. And then this is like, you know, a sophomore album. Every album is like, if I mix them up, I couldn't tell like on my thing, like where they came from. Nice. Well, that's just my ethic. All the way back to what I said with Union Underground back in the 90s. Just it was always like that. Kind of do it yourself, but do it yourself doesn't mean it has to sound bad. Do it do it yourself means keep doing it until it sounds right. <laughs> I mean, that sound, it's a heavy sound. It's not it's not a dated sound. It you can feel the 70s and the 80s rock in it. Definitely. Okay. But it's got the the metal nowadays on some level. So it's more of a, yeah. not, you know, it's not dated. You can't, you know, it, it, it's timeless. Thanks. I always felt like even though Union Underground had success, 
even at the time of what we were doing, I felt limited. Like there was one producer said, no guitar solos. I'm like, who says that? Like, that's the, a weird uh, thing to say. That's a, that's a crime. And it was, that was the worst time of that. There's a lot of good bands then, but there was like no solos. Everyone's looking at their shoes. Come Remember on, that jump around. Album, St. Anger had no solos. It sounds like shit. I know. That was sad. That was angry. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sad. It was a sad thing. That, I, I give it. I give uh, I give them credit for trying something new. Any any artist that does something new, or they're like if a band gets new members, they're like, I hate that band because I don't like the members. You know, yeah. I, I use this story a lot. Be like, yeah, that's like, like you get you know you get divorced, and you're like, yeah, I can't be friends with you. I like yeah. the original wife, but the new <laughs> <laughs> the new one. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm more like the daily or your wife. That's the same. Hey, have your new wife. You know, exactly. you got you got to change. You got to grow. I mean, and you, you may have some stinkers of an album, but at least you're trying. Or, oh, I just got to keep moving forward. I get that for I sure. Mean, but there was some bad production too. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's a great album. But as an I artist, guess, I mean, I get that they wanted to do something different. Yeah. But I wish it was a little more different. Exactly. <laughs> Sound wise. How did you go from what you're doing now and so you're doing Lita Ford? How are you balancing that? And I know Nikki does the Iron Maidens now. And I know she has a, her other own solo stuff too that she's doing. So you guys have like a lot of you know, plates, you know, going at once. You're spinning a lot of plates. How is that balanced? Well, now with the Without whole lockdown thing is we have a lot of studio time. Um, but before uh, we would actually, it was perfect because Nikki lived by me and some of the facilities we use and other people we've used with recordings isn't that far away. It was mm -hmm. just scheduling. We just had to get kind of like schedule and just say, okay, here's this group of dates here. Here's your dates. Ooh, look, there's, there's two weeks right there. We can do this or that. So it's a lot of that. And um, I call them happy problems. You know, if uh, uh, Heaven Below is going to do a show at the Whiskey, I got to make sure that I'm not playing with Lita at that time or that the Maidens. And um, I, I think that's happy problems. I think that's because I've been on the other side before where the calendar has nothing. And that's not the fun one. That's not a fun problem. No, it's gonna be hard. I always think of that, like you guys, and a lot of bands have, you know, a lot of different, you know, performers have their different bands, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do you do that? Like, how Just does one band say, oh, we want this, and then overlap. What do you, they overlap? Is that when you're like, you gotta call Buddy in a cover for you, or you gotta, We've I mean, had it's to hard. Or in Heaven Below, sure, our bass player has had to be covered. I remember when we first started, we have to cover a drummer or something, but man, it's just like, you can't let the whole house be balancing on one member or however you would say it. And um, yeah. if it's if it's for the greater good and a good cause or a good gig, we make it happen. You know, I say, well, I, I don't want to force anybody to do anything. You do it because you want to do it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, as long as you're there, you are the, the voice and the sound, you know. Part of it, yeah. No, Well, I have a badass band that makes it easier. Well, yeah, I'm not taking away from the band. I'm saying, but say you, somebody was sick. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? You were the, also the sound. I mean, someone could do the drums and it's not going to be the same as your voice. You, you can't be replaced. Exactly. I, and that was part of the reason with uh, when I formed Heaven Below, I was like, okay, I'm going to be the singer. And I know that I'm dedicated. So hopefully I'll have people around me like that. Yeah. No, you know, it's it good. They're good. Yeah. Somebody gets, on, somebody gets on drugs or somebody decides that they found God. And now I'm like, what? What about all, you know, you get in that whole yeah. No, no more of that. You got to keep going. It, it, it's a shame, I think, because it's a weird time for your band, because I almost think earlier you would have been bigger faster. Yes, because the industry is, you know, when Union Underground got a deal, there were seven major labels. I think maybe there's three now, and it's probably yeah. country, pop, and rap only, I'm guessing. Yeah. But, you know, I never did anything just for a label. That was just a... No, I just meant like, I meant like accolades with fans i mean you know metal fans and rock fans are pretty thirsty and hungry and, and dedicated you know yeah they're a fickle bunch but you know what i think one thing out of this pandemic is uh when people start getting back to concerts man they're going to be like wow i hope so okay it's feast or famine it seems like like too many concerts coming to your town now there's no concerts coming to your town <laughs> well i hope it stops some people from doing this at the back of the show like this yeah, exactly. Behind Put your phone down. Go to the front. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't be judging. Put your phone down. Go. You're a better guitar player. Don't show up then. You know, yeah. what's the deal? Let your BAMP open up. Um, but I mean, like, just sound wise, like, it would have been more back in the, yeah, Scorpions and Rock Maiden days. You know, the band really has that sound where it can, where it can continue on. 
where that that the audience would have grabbed it more. I love that stuff, man. I just I I go back, I bounce back and forth between newer stuff and I love that old 70s and 80s stuff and not really the glammy part of the glam some of the glamier stuff's cool, like Def Leppard's cool, but I think a 80s, I think a Slayer and Metallica and Priest and Maiden and yeah. you know, all that cool stuff from back then, you know. So well, when somebody says sound 80s, like you- they always think it's they always think of something poison or something, but that's the 80s. 99 lot- Loft Balloons. Yeah, yeah, the '80s yeah. had amazing metal. <laughs> it had it had the best, and it had the most different kinds of music too. You could get away with the '80s, you know. Then at the end, you kind of, then you've had King's X kind of sneaking in, and some weird stuff kind of going back and forth. It was yeah. kind of fun. Yeah, you guys were more heavier; would have been more like the Judas Priest, Maiden, and, and but now you still could too because those bands are still out there. The fans I say still love it. The music just lasts. I mean, I, I think I'm being in style. I, I don't want to be in style. What's in style? Like the the whisper vocal with the little drum machine loop and the Casio keyboard. Yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> no, I, I don't think it's not going to last. I know you want to do what you're going to do and you're going to last. But that's why you've been doing it for so long. I mean, they're strong albums. I mean, it'd be interesting to see how you guys can grow some more though when this is over. We're already, well, the one good thing with this, lock, this lockdown too is we've been writing new material and recording stuff and experimenting a little bit but not so much that it's like, whoa, who is this band? You know, uh, but we were trying to spread our wings a little bit. Your newest album, the, the covers, that's the newest one, like the pack and it's listen to it. It's so, it's, it's so different because you do so many different stuff. It has a sound. You guys have a certain sound, but you cover all the stuff. You honor them, but you put a little flair to them. Certain they're all pretty ones, powerful yeah. songs. Some you know? stuff almost, yeah. I mean, it, but it, it's, but you have your own sound though. I don't think you, have to, you don't have to, it's not contrived and uh, it's, a, it's a good cover, but you could cover albums too. I mean, most, it's hard, you know, to do covers and be fun. You gotta, you gotta have adrenaline to them. You can't be kind of lame about it. You gotta have fun no, with it. one had a direction. When we started it, we weren't planning on it, but we were like, have you noticed a bunch of the songs we're covering are people that have died? And then we're like, well, maybe that's what this album is. It kind of so we just kind of ran with it, you know, and and that kind of gave us a focus. Okay, it's a dead pe- it's a dead people's album. Okay, and then then it started to make more sense what we should do and not do. It, it feels it feels that you guys have like, fun with it too, and I think I think it personally would reflect upon the, the video you guys did the Iron Maidens. Oh, that was a fun time. Yeah, <sighs> that is a funny video, and at the end. You guys just goofing off at the end. Oh yeah, that's all we do. <laughs> you put our but I'm together. saying, but that looks funny. That's the energy I felt like with everything else too. That's how I feel like your other this was you know band did without it. It just feels like that was a whole fun part about it. Yeah, yeah. My, my Union Underground lacked. We had a lot of fun, maybe too much fun, but it, it was like there was apprehension to let people see it, and I always thought that was pretentious to me. You know, when I when I grew up on Alice in Chains. Those guys were cut ups every time I saw them on MTV, and uh, yeah, I was they were in speedos and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And it made sense to me. They're up there like doom and gloom when you hear them, and then they're having fun, you know. Yeah. So I think that's I like the problem. The yeah, that was that's really cool. So, how'd you end up hooking up with Lita? Uh, the president of BC Rich Guitars was a buddy of mine that I met when Union Night Around was doing its thing. I made friends with everybody. Uh, he wasn't the president at the time of Union Underground's success, but he did work his way up. And he he just called me one day and said, Lita Ford is auditioning guitar players. He goes, man, you, you'd probably be perfect for that gig. I was like, really? I, di- I didn't know she was back. She was gone for a while and then came back. Uh, he said, yeah. He goes, you should, you should try. He goes, if you want, I'll set it up. And I was like, okay, set it up. And uh, I showed up for the audition and Bobby Rocks, the drummer, Yep. Nelson and Vinny Vincent, he is so amazing. I don't have to. He's say a monster. It. He's a he's a monster from the day, from the day from the day. He is yeah, never. The, the bass player was a friend of mine, Marty, that I played with in other bands back. It's uh, Marty O'Brien, right? Marty he was O'Brien, with Tom, Tommy Lee, I think, for a while, Tommy wasn't he? And, and someone else too. Yeah, he's done quite and, a bit. And Marty had told me, he goes, "Man, you could totally get this gig." He goes, "If you want this gig, he goes, learn all the harmony vocals. That's something we could use with Lita." all the harmony stuff and I thought okay well, I'll do that so I learned songs and I, I, I'm real about the harmonies being an Alice in Chains fan I can pick out all the harmonies yeah so I learned all those and I showed up and even before I plugged in 
I pull out a crazy BC Rich guitar and Lito's like, where'd you get that? And I said, well, from the president who set this up. He gave me this guitar. She goes, that's amazing. And uh, her dogs were there and I'm a big dog person and the dogs were all over me. It was a good vibe. And then we launched into a song and I, I just made sure to sing all the harmony parts. And every time I would, she'd look over at me and I'm like, oh no, did I say, did I sing the wrong lyrics? Did I fuck up? Yeah. I kept doing that on all the songs. And then I later realized she was excited that I knew all the vocals. And oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, so I, uh, I did my audition. Some other big guitar players came in after me and I was like, oh man, I might not get this gig. There's other badasses here. Um, and I started driving home and before I could get off my exit, her manager calls me, hey, where are you? I said, I'm almost home. He goes, well, can you come back? I was like, well, why? He goes, well, it was a good vibe. Do you know these other songs? He named off a few more. I said, yeah, well, come on back. So I turned my car around and went back, played like three or four more songs and I had the gig. That's really good. I mean, I, I've heard you do some, uh, you close my eyes with her, which is something I don't think she can always do live. It's always kind of weird. Yeah, she has, now she has me doing the Aussie part now. That's what I'm saying. It sounds really good. I mean, cause usually she'll have other guests sing it or it's gonna be like a tape and it's always a thing. So now as a singer, it's gotta be great for her. I'm glad she came back. I was happy when she came back because I was a fan of her to begin with. Yeah. Especially the, like a limited field of, of women musicians at the day. I mean, now it's great. It's like Nikki and it's Mary Maidens and then different bands and Nita Strauss. And it's like so much more strength of women in the industry. But back then it was like her, like Doro. I mean, there was a handful. It was limited. Yeah. So to have her come back and reclaim her spot. I mean, she carved a, a spot in there that she should have. You know? Oh yeah, she's relentless and uh, yeah. She's a great I guitar like player that. too. I think she's underrated as a guitar player. Absolutely, she's a real strong player. We sit there and jam in our set. We have like back and forth guitar duels and stuff and it's a good scene, it's a good vibe. Yeah, she, I, I just think it's always been, she's always been underrated myself. Listen to the old albums of hers too. That's really cool, man. Now, so when you guys tour, is it um, longer tours now? Like with touring nowadays, before COVID, was it like, it was both like we did uh, two hailstorm tours with hailstorm and, and this band called Dorothy and it was long drawn out bus tours. And then we would do fly dates a lot too. Uh, when we weren't on a tour like that, we would fly into a city and then we would just play surrounding cities and then fly back out a lot of fly dates like that. And me, I love to travel. So I'm not a complainer about any of that. I like doing all that. The only thing I complain about, I don't like the cold because I grew up in South Texas. So the only complaints you get from me is, fuck, it's cold. Other than that- uh, You, you don't want to come to New England then, right, right now. It's actually it's warmer for us now, is it? Yeah, you know, so you want to come here in New England until, uh, until summertime then. I, I was live. the whole time, Nikki and I were in the high desert the other day. I was like, this is so beautiful, but it's way too fucking cold. <laughs> what was it, like 60? Yeah, it, no, it did get to like 40s. Yeah, 60s. I didn't even turn my heat on until I got in the 50s. Dude, it's 60 here. I'm wearing layered clothing. It's like, I don't even know, maybe 50 here. I got my window open right now. Right next to me, I got a window open. I'm like, it is hot. I, I, hot. I, went, to, I went to Atlanta for, for college yeah. and for recording. And it was, yeah. it was 1990, 89. You know, the track, that and everything. In Atlanta, from coming from New England, I just melted. I literally... <laughs> I take a I'm shower, walk outside, and sweat. I'm used to tank top and flip flops and shorts until I get on stage. You know? Yeah, that, that is, it's the one thing. Well, the reason why I was asking about the, the touring thing is because nowadays you feel like rock is weird because you got either they're going to package it in the 80s and the, that stupid one hit wonder, you know, which is, I, I think it's a lame phrase. It's like one song that was successful is going to be like a bad thing. Your one hit wonder. Really, I, yeah, I did one thing that was really good. And every time I hear that song, I ask, like, here, I read just catch it to go, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Yeah, but that thing. You know, I'm sure it's a curse to be a one hit for, wonder. For, I'm sure for, for some is. people, I, I think, and some people are like, um, somebody liked my song. I love it. So it really depends. Sure. I've talked to different people. But, but to, to that point, it's like they get lumped in either a package deal to fly out things. And some artists can just go out and tour. It doesn't matter. They can yeah. go city to city, they have stronger markets. And that's what I was kind of curious, because I mean, Lita was out of it for a while, but she, old school, worked all everywhere. You know what I mean? She, she put the work in. So yeah. I imagine she doesn't have to just do flowers. She can kind of go and tour. Yeah, we'll, we'll, honor, we'll play smaller venues with her 
on her own. But the thing I like about the packaging when they do it, it's immediately like Brett Michaels, Night Ranger, Lita Ford, arenas for a week and a half or whatever. And I'm not gonna lie, I like it. I love all. No, that's a good thing. I'm happy to play any venue, but I do like that's what I do like about the packaging and the catering. Suddenly is really good, and you know there's a person in a golf cart ready to take you to your bus and the stage. Who doesn't? You know, I love all that stuff. I was thinking of more of the, I didn't realize the packaging was just for like that kind of stuff. I was more like, you know, the smaller venues, the smaller rock things are doing, you know, like the events, the outside events, you know what I mean? Not like it's a fair, like the weirdest things that they always try lumping everybody into. Oh yeah. Those kind of things where they kind of, the smaller little festivals. Yeah. I wasn't aware they, they're they doing the arena things too. That's pretty cool. I, dude, I, I've always been humble in the sense of, I'm just glad to be there and people care about what I'm associated with or what I'm playing. You know, it, that being said, you know, we still have that attitude. Like we get on stage, like, yeah, it's time to kick someone's ass. It's going to be loud and, and, and crazy. So I'm into it. I'm not, I'm jaded, but I'm not, I'm not, you know. If you were jaded, you wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You were uh, pretty cool about it. Um, with, with your, with your band now, how do you think you're going to, like with COVID, any plans to kind of, I know you work on a new album. Any like opening slots, maybe kind of figure out, get lined up with some other bands? Before COVID, of course, we had a Texas run planned out and it all got put on hold. So I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I'd be happy at this point if until everything gets whatever the new normal is, I'd be happy to do some acoustic shows. You know, me and Nikki do those ones online. Those are really like, nice. Yeah, and some of my some of our promoter and agent friends are like, "Do you guys want to like play the Hard Rock residency at the Hard Rock in Hollywood for a month?" I'm like, "Yes, of course." Yeah. You, I said, "You're free drinks, right?" <laughs> before money, before money's brought up, free drinks, yeah, right? Yeah, free drink, right? Um, I love doing that stuff. I, I did that before Union Underground when I was doing those covers. I used to do, have an acoustic trio, and uh, it was challenging to play unplugged because. You can't hide behind distortion or big drums. We're not turning any goofy auto tune on our vocals and it keeps you on your toes, you know? And of course people yell out free bird and all that BS. And, uh, but then we do a cooler Leonard Skinner song and it's a great spot to, to do our originals. You know, the heaven below stuff, uh, a lot of it lends itself acoustic and I have no problem just breaking it out, you know, in a, in a, in an intimate setting like that. That's really cool. I, I think you, I bet you're playing the acoustic guitar has probably improved your guitar playing more than because you can't Absolutely, because you can't hide, clean. hide effects. No, you can't. I mean, I, I started learning guitar and I have a wall of guitars and stuff with my kids over there. I've been playing for a few years, but like I'll go and I'll like learn part of it and then I'll go down, I'll put down the electric guitar after you just like learn the basics and then you'll play it on the electric, on the acoustic where it's so much harder and you really hear yourself out loud. You're like, oh. Oh yeah, I remember it makes it so much better though. Yeah, I started on acoustic and then came back to it. Yeah, you get into finger picking and stuff. It's kind of, it's an instrument that has to sound good alone. You know, a guitar sounds great alone, of course, but is used with a big band. But I like it. It's kind of the the yin and yang of 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 music of going back and forth between those two. It's you know what whatever mood I'm in. One day I'm chill and it's acoustic. The next day it's it's you know one of my guitars cranked the stacks of amps. That, that's okay so here's here's a as we get towards the end here uh, what are your what's your what's your setup your favorite guitars let's talk some of them your rigs and music parts here i've got a bunch of them here uh schecter guitars uh endorses me and they've made me some killer guitars my favorite one lately is this custom shop thing right here oh, i see that one that is nice yeah what is, a, what is that like a, a green it's like a neon green on, on the side oh on the back too yeah, and it's got this, nice killer, this killer wood grain here. Larry DiMarzio custom made only 10 of these pickups, and somehow I got one. Um, it's got the Floyd Rose with the FU tone upgrades with the big block and all that. I used to think that a guitar had to be neck through body or glue in neck to sound the best. Yeah. That is totally not true. This is one of my best sounding guitars, and it's bolt on. Bolt on. And yeah. whenever any guitar player says neck through, I said, well, I have one word for you, Edward Van Halen. So it, it, a bolt-on guitar can sound just as great as a neck-through guitar. And I kind of proved myself with this one right here. That is, I've seen that guitar you played a lot 
uh, it's, it's nice. fun. It's a, it's a collaboration between a guy named Rob Brimstone out of Texas and the yep. guys at the Schechter Custom Shop. And uh, it plays amazing. And it's simple. It's just one knob. There's no anything else to it. I like that. What, what's, uh, what are you doing for string gauge? Uh, I'm on the light top, heavy bottom. So this is like 11s on the rhythms. And then this is like a 10 set on the three high strings. Okay. I kind of have a heavy hand so they it really stays nice and tight enough for me but then when it comes time to shred you can still bend these so i, I think that the hybrid's probably i hear that the most because asking around a lot i'm like well, you know we, everyone has their own like real opinion on strings it kind of depends question. how your hand is how you how you hit it i came to learn i'm kind of a hard player and I've made it a point to kind of pull back a little bit lately. I'm like, I don't have to dig in all the time. It's not rain and blood every two seconds, you know? Every other second. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I can, I can lay back. Well, but when I got my guitar, it was like super, like just like lightest strings you get, whatever. And I'm like, all right, I'm not very good, whatever. And I'm like, I want to keep. I like I'm buying new strings, I'm like, trying new strings, trying new strings. Yeah. Heavier. I was heavy, and then when someone like, took my guitar, they're like, "What are you, Stevie Ray Vaughan? These things are some like heavy, heavy strings." Heavy I'm like, I'm just trying. Strings. Yeah, they don't sound My better. Fingers got so strong though. I yeah, I used to think heavy <laughs> strings sound better. They don't. Once no. again, Edward Van Halen nines tuned down a half step. Yep. And but no it's, one, it's the whole sound thing. You know what I mean? And people are like, oh, yeah. try cobalt. You know, strings, and it works yeah. with the magnetic thing on the guitar. I listen to that. I'm like, it, every I go, it sounds out of tune. Now the guitar completely sounds out of tune all the time. The only thing I can say, and of course, uh, I endorse a few things, not a lot of things. The Elixir strings are the longest lasting strings, period, I've ever had. I have those. The, the, yeah. the, 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 gray, the gray ones, right? The gray package with the really strong higher end ones. Uh, yeah, where are they? I, them. I, I got boxes of them. I was one of, I was on the, uh, the roster. I was one of the people that helped them figure out. They're like, they'd send them to me, the prototypes. Are these good? How do these work? Because they go forever too. They stay in tune. Last, I just great. bought it. They're more, they're more expensive. And I'm like, well, like I said, I'm on this journey of just trying new strings. And I, this guitar is a super cheap one, but it's like I wanted a Strati guitar. It's an Aria Pro 2 from like yeah. 83. Yeah, wow. I got it for like 40 bucks. <laughs> it's crazy, right? But mm -hmm. um, all the different strings. And I, so I, I got those. I'm like, all right, they're expensive. I'm going to try them. You hear all different opinions on them. I was like, I had the guitar. It, and I'm in New England, so the weather changes constantly. Yep, the strings stay in tune like crazy, and they sound so good. They've been the best strings I've had so far. Absolutely, I highly recommend them, and you don't have to change your strings as often. Lita's guitar tech, he loves them on my guitars. He's like, dude, I've never heard a string that lasts that long. Usually, two shows at the most, and they're yeah. dead. I'm, I don't know. These, I think it's OptiWeb is the Elixir ones. Yeah, you don't, you have to clean them or anything either. They're like, no, nothing's on them. They're good. They're bright. I mean, These are bright as hell. Had them on here yeah. for over two months. That's crazy. Yeah. That, that is awesome. So, so Schechter, you actually, and um, Nikki, was, was she like one of the first people to be endorsed by, that, by, by a woman? I think she's one of the first females to have. That's uh, what I read. I wanted to, I would props to that because I think that's an important thing, man. Yeah, she's you got know? her own signature model. They're on the second, uh, the second run. Her new one for, for 2020 just came out and uh, it's killer. It, it looks amazing and it plays and sounds great. And it's it's impressive. Even if you don't, even if you didn't know who it was, and you just picked the guitar up, you'd go, "This is killer." You guys have some nice looking guitars. Like when you guys play together, there's a lot of focus. I mean, both the guitars are so nice looking. You guys have uh, a nice sound, but the guitars visually, like it's so nice. Um, yeah, 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 I just, we, it's, it's they're cool good to us. We love all the everyone at Schechter. All those people are they're real players and real people that work there. That's awesome. So is that your main guitar? Do you have any like you, a different acoustic or anything or? I got, I have a seven string acoustic that Schechter just put out and I, it is one of my favorite guitars right now. It has a low B string on it. Really? So, I don't know if you can see it right now, but. And it, it actually is really fun. I've been using it on recording and stuff just for like certain, certain textures. You can still play it like a, like a normal acoustic, but you can start adding right. some. Extra string, yeah. It's a so bass string I put on it, a point sixty five. So you can kind of play along with yourself while you're doing an acoustic thing and kind of I don't, yeah, don't add some depth. Any, uh, I play with myself anyway. Right? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I was trying to I avoid that. I knew. I knew we were going to those waters. 
Yeah, it's fun. At first, it fucked me up. I'm like, whoa, the chords are different now. But then, uh, I don't know, I used, it, I used it a little bit on the, uh, the Johnny Cash cover of Ain't No Grave on our Rest yeah. in Peace that has this guitar on it at the beginning. Okay. Playing that. And it just sounds full and like a, kind of sounds like a baritone guitar. Well, that's what I was wondering, because with the album, you get some really good sounds. So I was curious if you had the same guitars, certain pedals, you just kind of go to, or you just kind of a basic. I have tons of pedals. We love the Kemper. We use that a lot. That's the, one of the coolest inventions ever. Um, I have a guitar that um, I use this on our ACDC cover. This Robin Sander gave me this for Christmas. That Even signed beautiful. it to me. That is it's a, a Robin guitar, Sander right? signature guitar. And it's hollow body and it has a Bigsby on it. It's like this is good. Bigsby is beautiful. It's loud before it even gets plugged in. So uh. I use that a little bit on the record, depending on the sounds. I just have a bunch of different guitars and just kind of go to whatever I'm feeling at that time. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any, uh, what about amps and heads, anything particularly I have favor? my original Marshall JCM 800 50 watt head that I got when I was a teenager. My mom got it for me after I won a battle of the bands and a best guitarist and all that. My mom yeah. was really always supportive and she would buy me gear. Uh, it seemed like, like if I, the further I got, she'd help me with more gear. I still have that head. And, um, but man, I don't know. The Kemper is pretty outrageous. So is it? Yeah. And it's not a, it's not a, a modeling amp. It profiles. So it, it, it's like, you can't hear the difference between the real head and the Kemper. It records heads onto a drive into it. It's pretty weird. Really? Yeah, it's pretty freaky. It's such a debate with the heads and the modeling and the tubes nowadays, and uh, pro, you know how they're profiled. Yeah, I like to mix it Rabbit up. Rabbit hole. I, I, like you know, it doesn't have to be a plug-in. It doesn't have to only be a, a mic'd up head. We'll we'll mix things up and just kind of see what we're what we're in the mood for that day. <laughs> That's fine. So you so you're not really locked down to certain sound at all. Nah, nah, especially with like that cover album. We want it to sound like us, but we have to go from an NXS cover to a Pantera cover. That NXS yeah. one's a great, I played that one probably the most. That is the most fun jam out song because it's such I a good song. I was stream numbers and that one was up high. I was like, that was thrown on at the last minute. We just said, do we have one more song, one more dead person song? I'm like, what about that NXS song? And we threw it on there. That is like a good song. That is like a list of like, those are some good cover songs, man, that you want to play on clubs. Those are the ones you, everybody would like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I kind of like that song from In Excess. You know that one. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, exactly. I, I actually, I like it In Excess to begin with, but that song is a really good rocking one, Matt. I'm a casual In Excess fan. That just happens to be one that I like. Yeah. Well, I think it's hard because it'd be like, what's, the, what's, you know, what's your guilty music? What's your guilty band that you'd listen to? You know, they say that. I'm like, I don't feel guilty for any music, man. I don't feel guilty about anything I listen to. <laughs> you, look at my, you look at my phone, it's like Slayer. BGs. I mean, I love music. Yeah, you know? same here. I'm a huge no, no. Brian Adams fan. I love Brian Adams. People are like, really? I'm like, dude, it just talk the about a guy sound. playing acoustic and just sing. His voice is always on. Spot on. It's it perfect like gravel. It's, it's gravelly and melody at the same time. Always. It's gravelly, but natural. It's like he's not squeezing his throat. No. It just comes out like that. Yeah. But there's always a melody to it, though. I mean, it's it's it, it, it's it hovers in that spot, yeah. and this guitar it, it it's clean, but it's always crunchy. Yeah, you know, even like it's only love. It's so very simple, but it's uh, uh, it's just it's rock, man. He's my Bruce Springsteen. People are like, "Well, I like Bruce Springsteen." I'm like, "Yeah, fuck that, Brian Adams." <laughs> <laughs> he is actually uh, Brian Adams. Real good stuff. Um, yeah, I, I can't think of anybody's like a bad artist back then. I mean, once again, '80s. This really was his heyday when he first broke out, you know? Yeah. It was the I same mean, thing, just rock guitar. Pretty cool, though. Well, absolutely. I want to thank you, man, for the, for the time. And you know, maybe when we get out of this COVID, you guys have some more stuff coming out. Like we'll get Nikki on here. Profile. We're going to get past our sinuses. We don't have COVID. We know it's sinus. 